Welcome back everyone to another video and my latest addition to the home shop. Uh, I've been looking for a microscope type setup for quite a while and I've just been absolutely floored with the price of things on the market at the moment. I've looked at, you know, like Northridge Fix and whatnot and, you know, their camera module plus an arm plus lights plus all the other crap, you know, it was 1600 US dollars ish. Plus you've got to put it all together, plus it doesn't really do anything automatically, you've got to control it manually, and it was just ridiculous. And that started me down the road of looking at industrial cameras secondhand that have optical zoom built in that you can control remotely. Um, and then that led me to these, because these happen to use those high-end industrial cameras built into them. Now, for anyone who's wondering, these are sort of vision aid pieces of, of equipment designed for disabled people, for the elderly or whatever, for just general magnification of uh, text if you're trying to read something. So you might have like a line and you'd be scrolling down to, to read things. That's sort of uh, their main purpose, but they can be repurposed for doing electronics work within certain boundaries. They're not the absolute best thing on the market, but they're not the worst. And they have a lot of advantages over these DIY microscope kits that you buy, aside from just the image quality that we will get to soon. Now, this unit is labeled as full HD. Uh, I know for a fact it is not. The camera module is 720p. That is disappointing, but we can still work with what we've got. I did try this a couple of years ago with a much older unit that had a lower resolution and it wasn't good enough. So I would say that 720p, 1080p is the absolute minimum if you happened to be looking at one of these things. Um, but this is a Topaz XL HD from Freedom Scientific. There are many brands of these units out there to choose from. This just happens to be the one that I found on Marketplace. Now, you may look these up immediately on Google and you'll see the prices and completely drop on the floor. And you, you're rightly so because this is about $6,000 Australian, brand new. But hear me out. I got this for 400 Australian, which is like 260 US dollars, something around there. Because the secondhand market on these things is basically non-existent and they usually come from deceased estates or surplus auctions, medical stuff, whatever. So yes, the new prices on these is ridiculous, but you can get these secondhand really cheap quite often. Just have to be open to the different brands knowing what's out there. So this is a 24-inch screen that comes standard on this thing. It has a Sony camera module built into it that is 720p with a 30 times optical zoom. It is a serious camera made in Japan, no Chinese garbage. It has a lot of really cool user features that we're going to zoom in on and have a look at in a minute. But I just thought I'd show you sort of zoomed out quickly that it's got a movable table so you can just drop your work on there. You can sort of slide it around. You can uh, lock it in place if you're working on something. You can actually sort of go the halfway point and create just a bit of friction if you don't want it to move too much. Uh, it has some very, very cool features that you will not find on the scopes that you buy and sort of assemble yourself and add in camera arms and things like that. I have already made a modification to this, which is to add two extra light sources on the side. This is all a work in progress, but we will um, go into that. I'm gonna just give you a quick walk around the unit, showing you its design, and then we're just gonna lock in on the screen and I'll show you what it can actually do, I guess. So a quick tour of the unit, like I said, before we get stuck into its actual on-screen features. Uh, we have some hidden buttons under here. So there's two sort of uh, dials and there's a sort of a, a toggle switch here just to be aware of when I'm scrolling through things, extra buttons up here. Moving table, like I said, uh, this arm does move so you can rotate the entire screen it is height adjustable 
probably the biggest thing I'd like to see on this unit, to be honest, is uh, being able to move the screen back more. But unfortunately, we can't do that as is. It's uh, all the way back, which is a bit problematic. Now, we do have some extra inputs on the back here. This can be connected to a computer. Uh, you can hook up an external monitor. You can actually screen capture the uh, what's on screen as well. I haven't tried using it yet, but it is available. It has a HDMI output here, which weirdly enough goes to the screen, but it's converted to DVI for some very odd reason, I guess maybe. Screen technology was a bit different back when this unit came out, but it still seems to be current. And yeah, the Topaz HD badge is literally just covering the on-screen buttons. Um, yeah, so that's all that's behind it. So you can actually still just get into the on-screen stuff if you wanted to. Uh, but there's nothing really there. Everything is maxed out on it already. So yeah. Oh, these are the extra lights I added in. So I 3D printed a bracket and mounted it onto the bottom. So it just adds extra floodlight, a bit more contrast I've found. And if you look up in here, you can see the camera lens. Uh, there is also a laser for, for lining up your, where you want to look. And it basically just reflects off a mirror here. So it's all hiding up in there. This is a very solid unit. This entire base is cast metal. Uh, it is not cheaply made. Uh, and probably the only other thing that concerns me about it is the clearance here if you wanted to do soldering work or something along those lines. But yeah, that's um, pretty much it. I'm going to just sort of line this thing up and I'll take you through the on-screen display with the, the main buttons that you would use on this unit. Now, like I said, this is a more user-friendly unit than the DIY stuff you would buy on the market. You don't have to get a separate camera, a separate, separate arm, separate monitor, lighting and everything. It's all sort of like in one unit. And this is probably some of the biggest advantages. It's fully automatic. You don't have to do manual focusing or manual exposure or whatever. You just have these really nice dials. So you can just one touch zoom in, one touch zoom out. You can adjust the exposure manually if you want to, but the exposure is automatic at the same time. Um, and it tends to reset when you, after you do a zoom in function or whatever. So it will automatically readjust whenever it feels like it. Uh, one of the other great features that I also love is you can punch in like this. You can hold this button. It automatically zooms out. You can move to a different place on the board, release it, and it zooms back in again. One finger. That's um, really, really good. Now, the image quality on this thing is not like the best thing in the world. When I'm fully zoomed out, it's definitely a little bit pixelated and I wouldn't call it amazing. Uh, I find its best optical performance or whatever is sort of in the middle road around sort of 8 to 14 times magnification. I don't know if that's to do with the screen or the camera or what exactly is going on. I personally think this screen needs to be a foot or two back from where it is because you it's like having your face pressed up against a giant screen and you can see the pixels and everything. So yeah, it definitely needs to move back a little bit, I think. Now, there are some other functions which are actually handy in some ways, like you can add this line if you want to get things... You want to have things sort of parallel like that. Um, you might want to have masking lines, which can be adjusted and you can, you can shrink it, you can enlarge it, you can move them down. So if you were like, uh, I don't, I'm not exactly sure what you would do with this, but you might want to just like look at, focus in on one area for some weird reason and you can do that and you just want to stay locked in on that area. That is a possibility. You can also rotate it vertically. 
Um, you can have guidelines like that. Pretty cool features. Now, one of my favorite features is you can change color modes with this camera. So we can start going through some different black and white options. The exposure does freak out a little bit because of my extra lighting. Uh, we can invert it if you want to start looking at some circuit traces, if you wanted to just highlight them. And then we have all sorts of other crazy color modes available where we can um, highlight text and different things. Uh, this is sort of an enhanced contrast mode, and then you have the normal. This is normal, that's sort of enhanced contrast. You can see it doing auto exposure pretty rapidly. Um, the black and white is uh, very handy, I find, if you wanted to read text off some items. Yeah, let's just say um, you're having trouble reading these resistors, for example. You can uh, punch in like that. I mean, obviously they're readable, but we can go to one of the enhanced modes and it basically inverts the text and makes it very, very readable. And it's actually quite handy. I can't tell you how it's handy because it depends on what you're doing at the time, but it does have some usable functions. Now, like I said, uh, the zoom goes all the way out. We can punch all the way in, which does seem to become a digital zoom at a certain point. And then we are like ridiculously close here. <laughs> like this is not uh, that usable, I don't think. It could be handy, I don't know. I personally think around 14 is as far as you want to go. I think that's the end of the optical zoom range. You can rotate your board on an angle if you want to get more of a uh, three-dimensional sort of look, if you're having a look at some capacitors or something along those lines, like you can see that cracked one there that we've been dealing with on this analyzer. So yeah, that's uh, I find having it on a bit of an angle works really well. And then you can see that focusing coming back in again. Very, very cool stuff. And I, like I said, I think about 14 is about as far in as you want to go. You could maybe push it a little bit more, uh, but then you start to get a bit of distortion uh, and just image quality degradation. Now, like I said, the disadvantages are also the advantages. You don't have any control of the focus. You can lock the focus with this button on the left here. Uh, you can in turn on an, a laser, which is like a, an aiming sort of thing. But you can't manually focus this thing. It, it does it itself. You can't override it. Well, not in stock form. You, you might be able to hack it or something. But you can't tweak it at the moment as it is. The camera module, like I said, is 720p. It's not 1080p as advertised in the specs. Why? I have no idea. I don't know why they would lie about that or if it would make much of a difference. And the other thing, like I was saying, is that the, the height below the camera, it could be better. Like uh, if you're soldering and stuff, you might start hitting things just from the limited clearance that you have here. But I think there are ways around that also. So let's talk about some potential improvements before we finish this up. Moving the screen back further, like I said, I think moving it a foot or two back would be ideal. It would make the screen appear a bit sharper, I think, not having your face pressed up into it. There is potential, from what I can read in the specifications, that this Sony camera module that is inside this unit could be upgraded to the 1080p version. They are identical, from what I can tell. They're interchangeable, they have the same connectors. The question is, does the board that's in this thing have the capability to do 1080p video? I don't know. And the camera modules are in the range of $500 to $1,000. So at the moment, I'm not going to take that gamble on buying a camera that might not work in this unit. But maybe in the future, if I find a cheap one, I'll give it a go. Uh, finally, the last thing I would say is there is a potential where you could strip the guts out of this thing. You could take the camera module, you could take this control panel and the board that runs the whole thing, 
mount it in a box or something on an arm and use your own monitor and get rid of all the other stuff. That's pretty extreme, I think, but if you just wanted the guts of this unit, there is potential there to do something that's a bit more mobile that you can move in and out from your desk and use an existing monitor of some sort. You might be uh, potential to use a better monitor also, something that is a higher brightness level and enhanced contrast. But uh, yeah, this is my enlarger magnifier for the time being. You'll see it in some videos, no doubt. We'll give it a go at the moment. It's just for inspection purposes. Now, just to show you a few different um, sort of scenarios in a home shop or a maker space, you might want to check some inserts to see if they're damaged. Uh, this is a carbide insert that's been chipped. Can have a very good sort of close look at it under, under this. We could swap that out. We could have a look at a brand new insert and just appreciate the, the fine detail that is in it and punch in pretty far. Like I said, it's not perfect, but uh, definitely usable. And then maybe we might want to have a look at some 3D printing to see how well some of our connectors are printing, like the surface finish. Um, you know, we might want to have a look at the layering, for example, and then maybe, oh, let, we'll swap it out to the stacks connector and we'll have a look at that and just see how well it's finishing. And you can see that autofocus trying to hunt around a little bit there because it's not sure what to lock in on. And um, yeah, it's, like I said, it's cool and very useful. Is it good enough for your needs? I don't know. That is something that you would need to make a decision on. But I thought I would just share this purchase anyway and make people aware of these things because there are more of them on Marketplace. This isn't the only one. And I reckon in the US especially, there's probably millions of these things floating around for sale secondhand and sitting in people's garages and whatnot. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think, any suggestions or things you want me to try on it. Happy to do follow-up videos, and I will see you in the next video.